Hi guys. It is an exciting and frosty Saturday night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Here on this lovely, exciting Saturday, October 29th, 2022. There's a little dog and I uh, huddle in front of the heater <coughs> in the tiny house. Uh, but after tonight, there is no as far as they can see into the future, no sign of frost in the Finger Lakes of New York going into November. We're looking at the upper 60s this week. Uh, there you go. So much for winter time so far. But anyway, uh, you, you know, guys, uh, <laughs> I'm uh, having a little bit of a a a self-editing problem, probably partially due to my second drink here. I was going to uh, actually embarrass myself, insult my own intelligence and yours by reading this uh, bizarre article out of the New York Times Magazine by none other than David Wallace Wells. I I can't put the, it's hard to forward a link, you know, if you're not subscribed. Anyway, you'll just have to find it yourself. So I want to thank a uh, fellow Doomer, uh, uh, Michael Farragut from over there in Scotland, alerting me to this uh, bizarre descent into the twilight zone for somebody that I used to have a little bit of respect for, but uh after after breaking into this any tiny little shred of respect i ever had for david wallace wells and i might as well throw the new york times in there has been completely shredded uh by this latest descent into apocalyptic hopium that, that has done more to further the cause of these uh, climate change denialists than, uh, than Alex Jones and Lord Moncton and Book Hermit, all three combined, could have ever come up with. I, I am genuinely embarrassed for David Wallace Wells and the New York Times, and uh, it, it's going to be tough for me to uh, to get through just I, I, I'm just going to read the, the first five paragraphs uh, of this book length just, just just this encyclopedia of unadulterated horseshit coming out of uh, David Wallace Wells mouth I, I mean he has completely flown the coop uh, you know, he tries to cover his doomer ass. Uh, anyway, I, I need to watch my language. Do you believe my last rant? Can't even remember what it was now. The last one I did a couple nights ago, that for the first time in history, I ran afoul of the YouTube community guidelines, and they <laughs> and they uh, they age restricted. For the first time in history, I had one of my subversive videos age restricted. I, 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 I mean, I'm like, what is it, the shirt or, or what? So uh, I actually uh, appealed this. And, and I, I said, guys, uh, I said, I don't care about the age restriction, you know, because no one under the age of 18 has ever heard one minute of my, uh, of my videos. But at the same time, you know, what the hell? And I actually won the appeal. I actually won the appeal. And so they unage restricted my last rant. So I guess all of the, you know, all of the uh, kids that are going to inherit this planet can get off TikTok and come over to here to Collapse Chronicles. <clears throat> so we're going to try not to ruffle the feathers of the YouTube community as I read this crap. Uh, now, you're going to be on your own finding the rest of this. I have no idea 
why anyone with a brain would want to continue w w w with this crap. But I'm just, I'm just going to, you know, as a chronicler of the collapse of global industrial civilization and the planet, uh, I, 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 can't, I, I, I can't let this one go. So uh, we're going to go over to the New York Times Magazine. We're going to put the little dog up. You can put him on that nice warm bed. Head over to the New York Times Magazine for this uh, very ambiguous title, which I am embarrassed to admit I completely misunderstood. Being a doomer, when I read this, I was actually uh, thrilled that uh, David Wallace Wells and the New York Times Magazine were finally coming, or you know, coming to their senses by this weird choice of headline for this book-length essay. But of course, the joke was on me. <clears throat> beyond catastrophe, beyond catastrophe. A new climate reality is coming into view. Yes, by David Wallace Wells. And they start out with a, uh, a big photo of a solar, not a solar, of a, a windmill, a wind turbine farm saving the planet. And that should have been my first warning. So here we go. If I can do this, I'm going to try to get through the first five paragraphs of this with a straight face without projectile vomiting my margarita all over the camera. It's going to be a challenge. I think I'm up to it. Let me take two more swallows of my, of my stiff drink before attempting this. Take it away, David. <clears throat> You can never really see the future. Well, you can see the future, David, but I'm not going to get off in a Haiti rant. You can never really see the future, only imagine it, then try to make sense of the new world when it arrives. I'm just trying to make sense of David Wallace's brain right now. It's the only thing I'm trying to make sense of. Just a few years ago, Climate projections for this century looked, looked quite apocalyptic, with most scientists warning that continuing business as usual would bring the world four or even five degrees Celsius of warming, a change disruptive enough to call forth not only predictions of food crises, you know, like the ones we're seeing all over the planet this year. And heat stress, like the ones we're seeing all over the planet this year. State conflict, like the ones we're seeing all over the planet this year. And economic strife, like we're seeing all over the planet this year. But from some corners, from some corners, warnings, or in some cases, dreams of civilizational collapse, and even a sort of human endgame. Hallelujah, yes. Perhaps you have had nightmares or depending on your point of view, fantasies about each of these and seen premonitions of them in your news feed. No, I have not premonitions. No, I have not seen premonitions. Every day I am seeing premonitions implies looking ahead and trying to make predictions. 
you don't have to look ahead, David. It's unfolding in front of our faces every day. Maybe this uh, thing was written uh, a couple of years ago, and David Wallace Wells is not aware of the food crises, the heat stress, the state conflict, and the economic strife. Anyway. Now, with the world already 1.2 degrees hotter, scientists believe that warning that warming this century will most likely fall between two or three degrees. Two or three degrees. It, no, none of this four or five. It's now between two and three degrees. Yes, a United Nations report released this week ahead of the COP27 climate conference in Egypt confirmed that range. Okay, guys, I got to break into here. I am making a, uh, I am making a, an announcement on Collapse Chronicles. I am boycotting COP27. Now, if I'm reading an essay where COP27 is mentioned over the next month, it, you know, it might slip in, but for all intents and purposes, I am making the official announcement on Collapse Chronicles that I am boycotting COP27. COP27 is the latest bullshit, pointless, dog and pony show. If they didn't get it right in COP 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Why the hell do you think COP 27 is going to do a goddamn thing. Okay, it's a joke. I highly advise you to boycott COP 27. If you hear any anybody mention the words COP 27, cover your ears and run screaming from the room. I'm done with it. I don't want to hear the words COP 27. Don't you send me, don't, you better not send me one damn article about some dire, grim report from the UN, okay? I don't want to hear it. I don't give a damn. It's bullshit. Anyway, I just had to interject that. I, I hope that doesn't get me age restricted. Where were we? A little lower, meaning meaning less than two degrees is possible. Yes, with much more concerted action, a little higher, a little higher than three degrees. Two, with slower action in bed climate luck. Those numbers, two to three degrees, two to three degrees, may sound abstract, but what they suggest is this. Are you listening to this, Sancho Manza? What they suggest is this. Thanks to astonishing declines in the price of renewables, a truly global political mobilization. A clearer picture of the energy future and serious policy focus from world leaders. We have cut expected warming almost in half in just 
five years. Yes. David Wallace Wells hopping on the Michael Mann hopium bandwagon. Where are we? For decades, visions of possible climate futures have been anchored by, on the one hand, Pollyanna-like faith that normality would endure, and on the other hand, millenarian intuitions of an ecological end of days, during which perhaps billions of lives would be devastated or destroyed. More recently, these two stories have been mapped onto climate modeling. Conventional wisdom has dictated that meeting the most ambitious goals of the Paris Agreement by limiting warming to one and a half degrees could allow for some continuing normal, continuing normal, but failing to take rapid action on emissions and allowing warming above three or even four degrees spelled doom. Neither of the, those futures looks all that likely now. With the most terrifying predictions made improbable by decarbonization and the most hopeful ones, the most uh, hopeful ones, practically foreclosed by tragic delay. So this is my, you know, David Wallace Wells, you, you know, uh, he doesn't want to quite, you know, leave the Doomer community. He just wants to say, I guess he's taking the middle path. He's taking the Buddhist Doomer path that we're just a little bit doomed. Okay. We are a little bit doomed, but we're not completely doomed. You know, it's like being a little bit pregnant. Instead of being a little bit pregnant, we are a little bit doomed, according to Michael. And we can all handle being a little bit doomed. You know, what's the big deal? So you're a little bit doomed. All right, the window. The window of possible climate futures is narrowing. How does a window narrow? The window is narrowing. That doesn't make any sense. I think he probably wrote closing that, uh, that David Wallace Wells probably actually wrote that the window is closing and the editors of the New York Times you know, they said, no, we, we, we are not going to say the window is closing. Okay, so they, had, they went to their thesaurus, the window is narrowing, which it just, it, 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 it's like, it doesn't make any sense. A window does not narrow, okay? Oh, God. And, as a result of the narrowing window, we are getting a clearer sense of what is to come. A new world, full of disruption, but also billions of people, well past climate normal, and yet, mercifully short of true climate apocalypse. Yes.
What do you think, Sancho Banzo? Do you agree with that? And anyway, guys, it goes on and on and on and on. Uh, I, I did make it as far as uh, that clueless little bimbo, uh, Kate Marvel. Uh, <laughs> don't even get me going on Kate Marvel uh, saying the world is what we make it, I think, is was Kate's. And I and I and I have to agree with Kate. the The world is what we make it. Uh, anybody who doubts that just needs to go. I don't know. They they need to go down to Haiti. Uh, they need to go down to the Brazilian Amazon. They need to go to some cobalt mine in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. They need to go to some collapsing glacier in Antarctica. The world is what we make it. Uh, we are making it. We've already made it a uh, a you know a hellhole. That's exactly what the world is. What humans have made it. We have destroyed it. Uh, and uh, bring on a civilizational collapse in the human endgame. Sorry. So anyway, uh, that's it for COP27. That's the last time that someone is going to hold up COP27. I'm, I'm done with it. COP27. Anyway, hopefully, uh, hopefully, we're going to get a counterbalance to this. I'm going <laughs> to... We're going to come back tomorrow, barring any unforeseen changes in plans. Uh, <laughs> there can always be unforeseen changes in plans. We're going to <clears throat> check in with our old buddy Elliot Jacobson uh, tomorrow and uh, get his view of the state of the planet, comparing it to David Wallace Wells. Hopefully, I will never read another word David Wallace Wells has to say about anything until he comes out with his big oops, I was wrong, and you will not find that in the New York Times. Bye, guys.